Hi, I'm Helen Fu. Yoga, originated from India, is a great exercise building both mental and physical strength. Bikram yoga, which I call it hot yoga, has been experienced by millions of people. It has 26 postures selected from Hatha yoga. It's believed that these 26 postures systematically work every part of the body, including all the internal organs, the veins, the ligaments, and the muscles. The yoga room is intentionally heated to 105 degrees. You do sweat a lot during the 90-minute workout. Our guest on the show today is Laura Richardson, a Bikram Yoga instructor and the owner of Bikram Yoga Nashua. Welcome to the show, Laura. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's just fascinating that how can you have such heated room for yoga? And could you explain why you would heat the room? Well, we heat the room intentionally to 105 degrees with about 40% humidity for a few reasons. One, so that you warm up the muscles and you can move into the postures more easily. Similar to heating up, let's say, uh, metal, you're able to move more easily. Also, uh, you start to sweat. And when you sweat, it's very cleansing for the body. Oh, yes. I can and relate to that. It, it also, um, you know, it makes it a little bit more intense. Mm. It, it makes it a little bit harder. So for the, our audience, some of them probably have never tried yoga. Could you tell us a little bit about the background of yoga? Um, well, the Bikram Yoga, which I teach, uh, was put together by Bikram Chowdhury. He's from Calcutta, India. And he put together uh, this series of Hatha postures uh, designed to heal the body. And so each posture, you know, internally has its own benefits to heal you both externally and internally. I see. And I, my favorite part is actually the breathing exercises at the beginning and the ending. Yes. And could you tell us about this special breathing exercise? Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, we do two breathing exercises. We start with pranayama breathing. It's a deep breathing exercise. And you breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, long, deep breaths. And it's designed to energize you, warm you up internally through the vibration you're creating within the body and it also it calms you and focuses you gets you ready for your practice we close our practice with kapalbhati breathing and that's designed to cool and cleanse you it's multiple exhale breaths getting the extra co2 in the body out of the body getting the toxins in the body out and it cools you down before you mm. end your class with your final sabasa, savasana. Yes, I actually, I, from my personal experience, I felt like that uh, my lungs are really expanding through the the deep breathing yes. at the beginning, and so really I get more, more oxygen into my body and more energized. Oh, most definitely. You yeah. really increase your lung capacity. And I've found over the years as I've been practicing that I'm able to pull in more breath than I did when I first started. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Even for me, I just started uh, Bikram Yoga about a month ago. Yeah. And at the first couple of sessions, I didn't think that I could breathe in that much. So I was like, oh, okay. You know, you said like you count to six. By like two and three, I was like, okay, I'm full. Right. And now, a month later, I could even go on. You know, after you counted six, I felt like, oh, I could keep on breathing. Right, it's right. It's amazing yeah. how much difference it makes. Yeah, you are able to have more breath control. Yes. So pranayama, breath control. So over time, uh, you have more control over your breath, which then affects um, your heart rate. Mm. 
Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And for people who feel so stressed out, because when we feel stressed, we have shallow breathing. Right. Fast, and, and so this like forces us to have deep breathing and actually a de-stress. Yes. Yes. Well, I know, you know, when I'm just going about the course of my day, and if I catch myself getting stressed out and doing that shallow breathing, I just, okay, slow down, take a couple of deep breaths. You know, you can do the pranayama breathing any time of the day if you're feeling anxious and you need to, you know, calm yourself down a bit. Oh, yeah, that's a great tip. And yeah. I tell my clients, I said, when you feel stressed out, you know, driving, stuck in the traffic or whatever. Right. Just take some intentional deep breathing. Yes. And it, yeah, it calms you down right away. It helps. <laughs> so what is your background in order to be a yoga instructor? What kind of um, uh, trainings? Well, I'm uh, all Bikram teachers have been Bikram certified. And so uh, I went to the Bikram yoga teacher training in 2003 fall 2003 and so uh, we go through a very intense nine-week training where you uh, are trained by Bikram and his senior instructors and uh, you learn the postures you have two classes a day you have anatomy class uh, you have posture clinics you have lectures it's basically every day you know all day you don't have much time for a break at all um, but it's a very thorough training, and we come out, you know, having learned a lot. Wow. Yeah. It's just after 90 minutes workout in your studio, I feel just so tired and drained, but also energized. Right. I can't imagine that you go through this, like, a, for the whole day. <laughs> yes. Well, we do two classes a day, um, and, you know, if you had Bikram for one of the classes, it might be, you know, a two, two and a half hour class. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, it, it's an intense training, mm. uh, but well worth it. Oh, I bet. So it must be fun for you. Oh, it, it was fun, but also, you know, there were times that it was hard and draining and challenging, but, you know, you just keep going. Okay, after you get certified, you become a Bikram yoga instructor. Do you still need to keep on practicing? Oh, yes. I mean, if you're going to be, you know, a good teacher, you've got to make sure you keep up your own regular practice. Um, I practice typically about six days a week. I take mm -hmm. one day off. Um, and so when I'm teaching, I'm, I'm explaining from the front of the class how to do the postures, but I'm not actually doing the postures. So... Um, I'll teach as well as practice. I'll take mm -hmm. another teacher's class, you know. Yeah, you do sometimes correct each other. Right, even, exactly. Yeah. It helps. Sometimes you can't see a little alignment thing that another teacher can. It, it is very important that other people, you know, just point out. Right. When you're telling me, Helen, you know, your, your leg or your arm, I say, oh, I didn't realize that. Right. And so it really helps. Yeah. Well, you've been a great student. You've <laughs> caught on very quickly. I'm trying. I, th yeah. I know I'm improving. Yeah. Just when I, when I was doing the stretching, I could go deeper. Right. And, right. and the stability is getting better. I yes. feel like. Yeah. And I did see you one time. You were like doing it while teaching it. It must be really hard. How can you talk oh, well, and teach you know, and do I've it? Been, I've been teaching for a long time. So over time, um, I've been able to, let's say, uh, increase my breathing so that um, I, I have more breath control mm. uh, than when I first started. I mean, I even remember at teacher training just struggling to get the breath. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I've been at it a long time. I've got a lot of practice under my belt. So, Okay, sounds great. How many years have you been teaching? I've been teaching uh, since 2003. So let's see, I guess coming up on 11 oh, years. Wow. Um, and I started practicing about two years before I went to teacher training. Um, I was going to college in Burlington, Vermont. And um, I saw this article in, in the Burlington paper, and I was like, oh, this sounds so interesting. And I went down actually that afternoon and took their 430 class. Oh. Yeah, yeah. How did you like it? Oh, I loved it. You know, it was so <laughs> intense, and um, I, I had never sweat that much. <laughs> and by the end of class, I just felt so calm and so peaceful. 
Um, and I loved how I felt. And that feeling after mm -hmm. class is what had me go back again and try it again. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. Actually, I did some yoga exercises before in the past few years, and I tried a lot of different kinds of yoga, but I never tried Bikram yoga. So my massage therapist actually recommended, said, why don't you try Bikram yoga? Because, you know, I've been working on the computer a lot lately. Right. And so I have some, like, my back, my neck, and I start to feel like it's, looking, like, tense, tensed up. And right. Yeah, a lot of, like, pain. So she said, try it. And, and said, I said, okay, I've never heard of, well, I know um, there are different types, but how can this one, and then I tried, you know, to go to your yoga and tried the first one after that, I felt like, oh my God, this is like the best kind of yoga. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, our series is so great for people that are having back pain, mm. you know, because we really concentrate on doing a lot of backward bends. And so when you backward bend, mm -hmm. you relieve the pressure off of the intervertebral discs in between your vertebrae. Mm -hmm. So when we're, let's say, seated how we are now, in this forward bend, we're putting pressure there. So the backward bending that we do in the series really helps to relieve that pressure, helps to realign the spine, as well as when you backward bend, you compress your adrenal glands and you release the serotonin into the body. So, so that when you, yeah, <laughs> when you leave your class, you do, you feel better, you feel happier. Yeah. Wow, well, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, tell us some of the other health benefits for people who might have like arthritis pain or well, anxiety or stress, whatever. Yeah, well, with the anxiety, the stress, the depression, like I was saying with the backward bends, it's really good for, you know, relieving stress, anxiety, depression due to that backward bending, relieving, you know, that stress, compressing the adrenal glands, releasing the serotonin into the body. Um, as far as the arthritis, um, all the movement that we do really helps to lubricate the joints and uh, like the expression, a rolling stone carries no moss, a moving joint is going to be happier, you know, for someone that is suffering from arthritis. Um, I know one of my students he um, has arthritis and he didn't realize it at mm -hmm. first so he stopped practicing he was in pain he went and he found out he had the arthritis and he's come back and he's finding it's helping to relieve mm -hmm. some of his symptoms so he's mm -hmm. feeling better yeah I can relate to that I, actually some of the the poses you intentionally hold like your legs up and and stop the blood flow and then when you release it the blood really rushes and yes so throughout the floor series we do a standing series and then we do a floor series the standing series is quicker uh, there's not much of a break in between the postures the floor series we do posture savasana and so in the posture we're creating a tourniquet to a certain area let's say um, the wind removing pose you're cutting off the circulation creating the tourniquet to parts of the colon mm -hmm. and so that when you release Release the hold, the high speed blood floods through. It's it's a really great way to palpate the colon and great for the digestive great system. Yeah. Yes. And at the same time when you're doing that posture, you're compressing your hip flexors, your psoas, your ilias psoas. So throughout the floor series, we do a lot of compression and release. Mm -hmm. Almost like when there's a bend in the water hose and the water stops flowing through. Yeah. And then you release that bend and then the water, that's what we're doing with the blood. Okay. Some yeah. of the poses when I was doing it, I felt, oh, it's painful. It's almost like, okay, and I hope it's over soon. Right. But then, you know, just in the past few weeks, I started to feel like, okay, I can endure more and longer. Right. Right. And so... Um, you know, of course, none of the postures are going to be really comfortable where you'd like to hang out there all day. But we try to get you to, you know, an intense spot in the posture where you've got stretching discomfort, but, you know, not intense pain. Yeah. And, um, and then you hold your edge and then, and then you release. And like I was saying before, then the blood floods in. Especially there was one that when I first was doing it, I kind of hated it. Right. The one you have your arms oh, locust pose. Yes. Oh yeah, and then it's 
that was not comfortable. Yes, so that one, what you're doing, it's actually a very deep elbow stretch, but mm -hmm. you're not going to hyperextend because the floor is there. It's creating just, you know, straight. Um, but what it's great for is carpal tunnel, tendonitis, frozen shoulder. Um, we tend to get congestion in the elbows because we hold our elbows in a bent position so much, whether we're typing, you know, driving. That's true. And so uh, that posture really helps to get the congestion out of the elbows, whether it be mineral deposits, calcium deposits, uh -huh. with the deep elbow stretch. Wow, that sounds great. And it's interesting, when I was doing yoga before, I didn't see as many men in the classes. But for the big room yoga, every time I go, about half of the class is men. Yeah, we, we do tend to attract um, a lot of men to our practice, I think because of the intensity of the practice. Um, at my studio, I have several uh, guys that come that do, um, let's say, ultimate fighting, Bra Brazilian jiu-jitsu, <laughs> you know, because it really increases their range of motion. It's really great for people that, um, you know, play sports, that increased, you know, lung capacity, as well as the increased range of motion. Um, I have one student that is a marathon runner and since practicing Bikram Yoga has been shaving about a minute off of each mile. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So the, the, the yoga has really been helping his running, but the running hasn't been helping his yoga. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of, um, what is it good for, like, a, what kind of age group, I would say? Or oh, well, you do know. Do you have a limitation on no, age? No, no, we don't have a limitation on age. You can be any age. I, I remember one of the women that I trained with uh, at teacher training was 72 years old. So, you know, one of the things Bikram says is, you know, it's never too late, you're never too old mm -hmm. to start over from scratch. Um, and we, ha we actually have uh, some teenagers that come and practice. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's usually you see 18 and above that are more interested in it, but um, we do have some younger students. Uh, the thing that we are a little bit cautious about with, let's say, children, uh, is just that the sweat glands are developed mm -hmm. so that they cool off and stay the 98.6 degrees. And with kids, sometimes the sweat glands aren't fully developed. So if they tend to get pink, you know, we, we might not recommend it for them. Okay. The heat, is there any concern for people to be in the heated room for 90 minutes or can they get overheated? Well, no. I mean, because we do sweat, you'll find your, your core temperature doesn't change because the sweating is keeping you at your temperature. Now, if someone's having a hard day, they're struggling, they're welcome to sit down and take a savasana and watch and just, you know, take a break, have some water. But your actual temperature isn't going to change. So there is no competition. Basically, you do it according to your own pace. Right. Whatever you can do. Right. You'll see people in all different, you know, spots in the posture. Someone that's newer to the practice might be in the beginning setup of the posture. And then myself or another one of the teachers might be going to the full expression of the posture. Um, but you can always take it to farther places. I mean, in my own practice, mm -hmm. there's, there's no limit. I'm still trying to get a little bit deeper, a little bit farther, but I'm never competing against, let's say, the student next to me. Mm -hmm. I'm just really competing against myself to in, improve my own practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny that um, I, I was watching the, the class and people do very different like styles, different degrees and different uh, kind of skill set. Right. And so sometimes when I, when, when I when I first started, I saw a couple of instructors in front of me, like you, and a couple of, um, like Victoria. Yes. And Jose. Yes. I said, oh my God, you know, their postures are perfect. And right. I feel right. intimidated. Well, you know, the thing is, it's just like 
practicing playing an instrument. The first time you pick up the guitar, you can't play the whole entire song. You know, you might strum a couple of chords, but we've, we've put a lot of time and practice in, a lot of sweat on the mat <laughs> to get where we are today. Um, you know, when I first started, I could barely touch my toes and I'd have to <laughs> sit down a posture and take a break. And then I started to find, oh, wow, I can do a little bit more. Wow, my stamina is increasing. Um, so, you know, it just, it just takes practice. But, uh, you know, never feel intimidated when you see one of the teachers doing, you know, really beautiful posture. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of, oh, that's where, that's where it's going to go eventually. It's very ins inspirational. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, so would you like to show us a couple of the Yeah, postures? sure. I'd be happy to. Let's see. I'll just come right we over here. We have a mat here for you. I'll start first with a floor posture, and then I'll come up to a standing posture. So this posture is called Cobra, and you create the back bend in the low back. And that's like the one I was talking about earlier. It's really helping to release the pressure off of the intervertebral discs in between the vertebrae. Um, another one we do in the standing series is Eagle Pose. So I pull my elbows down and I really feel a compression through my hips, my inner thighs, my arms. You create a stretch through the trapezius muscles. You're cutting off the blood to the femoral arteries. You're opening up the joints. Uh, triangle pose. That's a gorgeous triangle pose. Oh, thank you. So in that posture, you're using every single muscle to hold that posture. You're really opening up through the hips, creating strength. Uh, one of the ones we do in the standing series is the tree pose. And in this one, again, you're opening up the hips like the triangle pose. And the hips tend to be a tight place on people. And we do this tree pose. You kind of center yourself, you feel your breath slow, you know, the heart rate start to slow down. We transition from the standing to the floor series. Uh, another one we do is the balancing stick. And in balancing stick, I continuously stretch forward as I continuously stretch my leg back. It's a traction posture for the spine, almost like someone's got my foot and someone's got my arms, and they're pulling me apart. It feels great. Yeah, and what I admire about your poses the most is the bow. Oh, the standing bow the pulling. The standing bow pulling. Okay. So in standing bow, you're kicking and you're stretching simultaneously and again you're creating that deep back bend in the spine and so we do that one and you shift the blood from one side of the body to the other side of the body mm -hmm. yeah beautiful thank you thank you oh, very nice. much nice job someday <laughs> i'll be able to do that <laughs> yeah and so uh, tell us a little bit about your studio and your website. And okay, uh, sure. How can people uh, get in touch with you or try it even? Oh, well, you know, you can go to BikramYogaNashua.com. We have uh, uh, 25 classes a week. You can show up to any class. You don't need to pre-register. Maybe just get there 15 minutes early so you can fill out the new student form. Bring a bottle of water, a bath-sized towel, wear comfortable light clothes. Uh, you know, shorts and tank top is fine. This would be a little bit too overdressed. <laughs> and um, you can also go to our Bikram Yoga Nashua Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we love having new students. We have new students a lot, so you don't have to feel intimidated that there won't be other new students. There's always, you know, new people are welcome all the time. Tell us about the special you have for people to try it. Oh, well, we have an intro special, 
It's for uh, new students that are in this area, and it's $10 for 10 days. So you don't have to invest a lot of money, you know, if you decide, oh, you love it, great. And if you decide, oh, maybe it's not for me, it's just the $10. You get the whole 10 days to try it out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, say the first one's really tough. Come back again. Each time you get a little bit more the hang of it. Yeah. That's a really great deal. Yeah, it's $10 a, it, for about 10 days. Yeah, if you come every day, it's a dollar a class. How can you go wrong? <laughs> yeah. Can't beat that. No. Yeah, so people can just... Uh, go to your studio or do they have to call you to make an no appointment they don't or? need to call they don't need to make an appointment you know just show up a little bit early we're in the cove mill buildings down by the clock tower apartments um, you know just show up before class and you can actually print the new student form right off the website or we have them at the desk you know you can just fill one out and yeah everybody's welcome so how many instructors do you have uh, there's about eight of us yeah, yeah I've, I've met most of them probably. Yes, yeah. everybody brings something different to the desk, something yeah. different, you know, into the hot room. Uh, you know, we teach the same 26 postures, but we all have a little bit different style. Um, so, you know, every day you'll see an, a new teacher in there um, at different times. So if you find one that you really like, you can get to their class and you find another one, you know. But really, it's, it's not so much about the teacher as just, you know, doing your postures and enjoying your practice. I do want to say that I like all the instructors I've met so far. Oh, They're good. They're all very good. Oh, good. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> I like them all, too. Well, thank you so much for coming to the show. We yes. had a lot of fun. Thank you and so I'm, much for having me. I'm looking forward to looking just as elegantly as you someday. Oh, well, thank you. You already do. <laughs> thank you. So we've had Laura telling us about yoga. According to the 2012 Yoga in America survey, the number of adult practitioners in the US is 20.4 million or 8.7%. No doubt, yoga's combined focus on mindfulness, breathing, and physical movements brings many health benefits. I encourage you to give it a try if you haven't done so yet. You might get addicted just like me. Stay healthy. See you next time.